Welcome to episode 537 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm Jay. And I'm Glenn. It's the grand final it episode. Is. The pre the pre grand final episode. Finally. And it is uh almost it's happening a fucking long season. As the grand final is. Yeah, well look, listen, we're recording this on Friday night. Didn't come out on the when late, late Wednesday like it normally would have, um, slash early Thursday morning. And really there was a couple of things behind that. Um one of the reasons was the Dally M's were on Wednesday night. Didn't finish until after we would be recorded. Um, just want to get on the record. That wasn't a factor. <laughs> we just couldn't be fucked. <laughs> and we didn't and we didn't have the fucking time crunch imperative of Thursday night football or something, you know, that like forcing us into like Wednesday at the latest being the time. Yep. Because um because you know, it's a common theme that we'll like, you know, push Monday to Tuesday, then on Tuesday, push Tuesday to Wednesday, um, if we can. And, uh, and you know, we, we're pretty flexible around that as well because, you know, people are busy and they've got things on different nights and, you know, whether it be work or, you know, kids' sport, and blah, blah, whatever. So, um, but this time we didn't have any of that pushing us in any particular directions other than just the general pervasive attitude of not being fucked. And uh, here we are on Friday, which was pretty much the line in the sand that Wednesday usually is. <laughs> So here we are. You got a week. Uh, you got a pre weekend. You can listen to it on your flight on the way down to the grand final, yeah. or Fantastic. up, or across. If that, or you can you be know, a sour cunt like that. Shane Cash and fucking send a message going. You guys doing a podcast? No. Oh, so that was so that, okay. So literally two people. Like, once because someone sent a message to the page, and um, yeah. and which which I which I replied to. So Cash is well, okay. So that's literally two people who give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not even like our, you know, not even people like we would say like our friends, like you know inner circle like you know real life friends none of them because i mean obviously i wouldn't i would never i don't I have any real life them. friends associated or hosting would, this podcast i would never i would never <laughs> accuse you of being actual friends with shane cash because i mean he didn't even come and watch fucking d's run around the grand final yeah that's exactly so, it. i mean so like that's, that's you know that's not very friendly um apparently he was sick yeah yeah sick, sick of, of you fucking sick of selling yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, sick of, it sounds sick like there's of plenty of people life. sick of that, Jay, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's a fucking pandemic. <laughs> uh, okay, so anyway, so this this week we've got a couple of things to talk about. We've got a lot of news things. We've got the games from last week, which I was saying to Glennie before we recorded and before you got on the line, stepped out, I was just like, you know, those games were fucking shit, so <laughs> I mean, let's not spend like the usual amount of time on those that we normally would because they just were, un- they were uncompetitive and I... And if I get too far into this Broncos game, I'm just going to fucking talk about the the the, the cunt hole referees. And yeah, you know, I, I hate being that fucking guy. I, I, no, I hate you being, hate it. I, I hate, you being, hate Aaron, being that I hate guy. Being the, I hate being the fucking Aaron you know Brockovich what? trying to get justice you, you for must, fucking football teams. You, you must be the fucking <laughs> Mike Tyson of podcasting. You know, Mike Tyson says that fucking winners do things that they hate, but they do it as if they love them. And yeah, the way thank you. you fucking refs fault. Thank you. I this could not have put it any better season. myself. This whole fucking season, <laughs> see, every is, manly loss. See the thing oh. is, the thing is, it's not it's not refs faulting what it's doing because it's not just manly games. <laughs> it's not just manly games. It's any game. And like for example, this one would be the Warriors. Um, it's and it's not like it's not refs faulting. I'm just trying to get some demand, some accountability from the people in the middle, so that the games are fucking officiated correctly in this world of. Because we're watching all these other fucking sports. Like, you watch a lot of basketball. I'm watching baseball and fucking, you know, NFL. They get the decisions fucking right. They got the technology available. And guess what? They get the decisions fucking right. Yep. And they're Americans. And Americans are fucking stupid. Yeah. So, what's your excuse, cunts? That's yep. all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just trying to shine a light. Mate, it's not... The, the trouble is, it's not a fucking hard question. The trouble yeah. is, you can't do something about it easily. It is a culture issue with the NRL. Hmm. It is a culture issue that the refs are too fucking insulated and protected. Yeah, that's definitely that part of it. There is a culture issue that it is not okay for them to make mistakes in the moment. It is not okay for them to be you know, corrected by a bunker. Okay for them to be corrected by a touchy, hmm. stupidly enough. They would like, rather okay. be corrected. They would rather have fucking Annesley front up on Monday and apologise for yeah. something that fucked the game, rather than actually have a, have a dude upstairs three seconds after go, "Hey, pull that back." There's blah yeah. blah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 
So, all it is. That's the only reason it'd be happening. But, um, yep. Anyway. Yeah. Let's get into it. Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll shall half, we st- we're halfway deep before we've started. We're, we're halfway. We're halfway. We're halfway finished the episode. I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. Um, shall will we start with like newsy things, or will we go with these like the last games? Do the first? games, then the news. Right. Okay. So the the, the first one, uh, the Panthers thirty eight to feed the Storms four. Uh, thirty eight to the Panthers a hat trick to Toto. Uh, Cleary, uh, Taruva, and Edwards tries. Cleary five of six conversions and two penalty goals. Storms a try to Olam, and uh, that's fucking it. Yibba um, yibba, Lee Bailey time to detonate his account again. The, the the only concern I've got out of this is a little bit of Penrith's defense in the centres, particularly know, over on their right hand side. Right. That's yeah. it. Um, that that was picked apart too easily, way too many times for me to for me to be happy. Um, there's, there's been some shuffling of sides and shuffling of players and players coming in and out through injuries and, you know, maybe I don't, I don't know whether Peachy has a, a dust that he leaves behind when he, <laughs> he comes into the side and then out again. Look, can uh, I just say... A let's call it a me, residue. Far, <laughs> far be it from me, the peach, the peach residue. No. There you go, there's your far, episode title. <laughs> far be it from me to defend Peachy. I mean, I haven't... My, like, my life hasn't been affected negatively by, by that guy ever, like the two of you have had to withstand at times. But... He wasn't making know. those. He there's, was he was fucking tries, but he wasn't making those defensive errors. There is a fucking six degrees there. of separations that says that Tyrone <laughs> fucked you too, Nathan. Yeah, but the thing is, he never plays well enough. He hasn't played for me, so I haven't felt that that side of it. And he never plays well enough to defeat me either. So, <laughs> so I feel like I'm pretty safe. <laughs> You're peach I, mean, someone, I mean, if so, yeah, yeah, that's it. Peach, that's now that's the title. Um, yeah. <laughs> And I'm sure. Look, if, if David Middleton wants to go through, just like you know, has 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 fucking Peachy ever done anything to to fuck Manly in in his entire playing yeah. history, no matter who he plays for, then great, go um, for it. But um, yeah. The, the the other thing that was really fucking interesting was when right at the end when Luai went off, and I understand that this was right at the end. Yep. And the attitude isn't the same, and <clears throat> you know Melbourne players may have given up a little. Like they yeah they should have given up after ten minutes because they're all fucking no hope. Plotters. But, um, when Luai went off and all of a sudden Cleary was playing both sides of the field again and, and doing that, he, he looks a fucking million dollars better than than he does. So I... It was actually one of his better, like, attacking games yeah, in his it. entire career. Yeah, so... Um, look, you know, you don't, you don't wish anything, obviously, to happen to, to disrupt your team, especially on or during a grand final, but... Um, far out, he's dangerous when he just floats and can can play anywhere he wants to. So, yeah, the the, the result was as, as it should have been. You know, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Melbourne capped off a season where they were a good team. They were a top four team. Uh, they underperformed, I guess, probably from their point of view. And their finals campaign mirrored their season in that it had some fucking great moments but then also some very un-Melbourne-like moments when they were pushing everything, their discipline let them down, and it, I guess in contrast, it makes all of those Melbourne teams of old a little bit more human because really it was just that top-level discipline in terms of errors and, and penalties and, and the concentration on controlling aspects of the game like where teams start their sets and where you hand the ball over that made those teams able to do, to do what they did so um, yeah there it is Penner through again as it should be um, now officially the greatest team of the modern era the only team to uh, play in four legitimate grand finals in a row so it's an accomplishment um, that, that will stand for the test of time I don't see it ever being broken that's the fucking Will Chamberlain scoring a hundred points of NRL records. Everyone should stop trying. It's true. It's actually like Will Chamberlain, yeah, like the Will Chamberlain too. Like you got the twenty twenty one Grand Final in there, and so you got you got like a lot of asterisk seasons in there with COVID and whatnot. So just There's like no uh, just like just no, like no Will Chamberlain, around Will Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain playing against you are not the white Will people, white of people, and farmers. <laughs> <laughs> playing, playing, playing barely when barely when you know. I mean, playing barely when black people are allowed to play. And, 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 you are the Tyrone <laughs> Peachy of analogies. <laughs> oh, fuck! That makes my brain hurt. What do you suggest? Will, 
Will Chamberlain was donning whiteface before he went out on the court. No, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying he's overrated. And and it's like you look, and you look, and, and you look back in history, and it's like Bill Russell's what? Like you look back in history at the and and the records and the st- are, are like fucking incredible, and you're like, oh my god. But there's some you see. You grainy see, you know, footage you know, that's, that's that would indicate yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great. So anyway, we went Great. from we went from Jay sounding like a modern day Dragons fan to, <laughs> to, to that. Well, I mean, that, that's possibly the, most, that's, the worst three minutes of fucking that's, podcasting that's, we've ever done. That's that's the most interesting thing, and, and honestly, that's 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 the reason that I'd like to get fit and make sure I live as long as possible. Because I mean, with the Panthers, you know, getting their four grand finals in a row. I mean, I, I want to live to see which one of them at age 75, as it turns out, is a pedophile and, and, and has historical, historical child abuse cases, leverages against them as they die. I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, that's, that's something worth living for. Uh, now the Broncos 42, see the Warriors 12, uh, the Broncos tries a double to Billy Walters, Glenny. Um, Herbie that's, t- that's a bit of pill. There's a bit of pill. Uh, uh, Jesse Arthur, Jordan Ricky, Ezra Mam tries, uh, Renault, six of six. Reese Walsh, one of one on the conversions. Warriors, 12, double two, DWZ. Montoya with the other one. Pompey, zero of three. And really, like, they were out wide, but his goal kicking really fucked them because they yeah. sort of, they weren't able to keep pace at that time when they were going sort of try for try for the first three tries. Yep. Um, and the Broncos kept going up in sixes and the Warriors kept going up in fours. And so the That's margins to, kept increasing on them anyway. To, to have scored the same amount of tries yet still have scoreboard pressure on you is a mm. fuck situation to find yourself in. Still mm. behind by a converted try despite fucking... Yeah. Yep. But, um... Which you can't convert, so it's essentially two tries. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Look, uh, I, I think that, you know, the result um, probably overshadowed a lot of positives of the, of the Warriors season to, to finish a bit like, like that. Um... The Broncos probably just had, you know, playing at home, um, you know, they started with a, a touch of, you know, a few nerves. They looked a little bit shaky. Warriors um, scored Warriors first. Scored quite and, easily too. When they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, they sort of sucked it up and, and pulled it together. And, and, and I'm the last person to give Billy Walters credit, but um, he's – his activity around the ruck. And um, I think at times he probably did try and be a little too creative um, at various stages. If, if I try and stick with my theme of knocking everything he does, but um, he was a catalyst for, for Brisbane riding the ship and, and obviously, you know, Walsh again, just had those moments in a game, which he's had pretty much every game he's played this year. And, and the Broncos just, just kept, as you say, kept the foot on the pedal, and the, and the Warriors couldn't pull them back. So, and contrary, um, and, and 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 contrary to the previous week, I mean, they they didn't wrap him up at all, mm. and the only time they ever sort of brought anything undone was that intercept. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, and that was, and he was not under a hell of a lot of pressure when you know, when when that happened either. I mean, that was just no, you it's know, just poor, poor pass and great yeah. play. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but yeah, they they roll on. Uh, Reynolds was great. His kicking game, his goal kicking was exceptional. Um, coaching yeah. amazing, as always. Uh, he's I mean, talking about co- have. yeah, and talking about coaching though. I mean, do you think that Webster should have been disqualified from um, winning the ultimately that he won the, the Daly M Coach of the Year? Do you think he should have been disqualified just by how poorly he coached them about to, and the, and them allowing Billy Walters to to score tries from dummy half? Look, I think he needs to be judged on the performances of the whole season and and the whole body of work rather than one uh, tragic anomaly to close out the season. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would suggest that is not the biggest issue with the fucking fast that is the Dally M's and the New Zealand Warriors. Oh, we get Warriors. there. Oh, we get there. We we'll get there. Don't you, don't you fucking worry uh, about we, that. We really are. Boys, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not the type of guy to bring this to your attention, but we really are fucking just reeling tonight we're trying to pull this together but we've now uh we've now been recording for 16 16 and a half minutes 
not one of you cunts has brought up, you know, everyone wants to talk about the farce of the Dally M's, but no one wants to talk about the real awards that went on over the weekend on Saturday night. Oh, fuck. You're right. Sorry. I've well, got to apologise. Let's see, just get it. Let's, are we Glenn, finished talking about no. that game? <laughs> if you were an actual fucking podcasting professional, you would have, you would have, assu- you would have assumed, <laughs> well, you would have assumed that we were actually going to segue into it in the section about the NRL. Oh, I know people. I when know people that listen section. to the first 20 minutes of this show only for the touch football chat and don't listen that's any fine. further. Well, to that's those fine. people, to those people, I say, gotcha, bitch. I'm going to you for another 20 minutes. So... <laughs> Oh, fuck. Let me. So, all right. Well, if you finish talking about the games for now, because we can talk now, about the, the merits of the two just, teams in the just ruined, to come. ruined the orgy by running in and fucking <laughs> furiously jerking <laughs> off in the middle of the room before everyone's ready. It's strangely like accurate to, to real life now? proceedings. <laughs> and you know what? I'm not even. Gonna, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to suggest that we wait until we've had a discussion about those fucking try with two forward passes in it <laughs> as the Warriors are looking to get into the game. So well, that I, might be, I, perhaps I be the best thing. I don't even I don't even fucking care. Because, oh, yeah, we, we we spoke about the referees already. We've already decided it's a problem that we can't solve yeah. until you know there's too many cunts. Throw up our hands just like they do when they see forward passes. Possibly possibly the worst forward pass yeah. I've seen. It was so bad. It was so bad that fucking Reese Walsh was actually pulling up because he knew it was going to get called yeah. forward. Yeah. It was that far forward, and then he then he had to go. Oh fuck! And then this and motor again because like, it was play yeah. on. It- and then to which point he received another forward pass <laughs> <laughs> to score the try. Yeah. Um, any anyway. So yeah, on Saturday night, the uh, Toowoomba touch football. The uh, Glens Glens are uh, you know oh you know, mighty mighty lines yeah. Yeah, the mighty I've, lions. I, yeah. I, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, are they, uh, are yeah. they a pride of lions, Glenn? No, no. It's uh, well, I mean, technically, lions, lions of pride. They're technically a pride of lions. It's it's a collective okay. collective term. Um, but look, otherwise known as a bunch of legends. They yeah, you had your, your yearly end of season like your trophy night situation. Yeah, presentation night. Presentation night. Yes. And oh my god. I don't know how long it was after the award happened, but I think it was probably measured in seconds rather than minutes. A text comes through with a fucking photograph of a, of a trophy. Most improved. <laughs> fucking one, one, one big D's. Yeah, they got the spelling wrong on the trophy. Clearly. Yeah, they spelled, they spelled it G-L-E. I mean, you know, there was no D's on there at all. I couldn't fucking zero. Read, but, but But that's okay. Uh, <laughs> and not only yeah. that, your, your son also won... A most improved trophy. Yeah. And look, I know how he plays and I've seen you play. And I've never seen the same sentence mean such vastly different things. You said something similar in the comments and I was like, this is, this is no, you something you only were, only Gillis yeah, could, yeah, could put it that way. But that's, but that's not what you said. What you did is you pulled out your phone, took a screenshot of it, pasted it into the text <laughs> and just wrote, cunt. Yes, <laughs> I need, again, I need to stick with... With uh, with the form, that's what I've done approximately eight billion times in my life, <laughs> which says far more about you than it does about me. Um, I mean, you're the only one but, doing it, Glenny. I mean, just what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, look, I was informed uh, by the great Mark Kelly, who was uh, the MC, and uh, was you know presented me with the award that he was he was very close. In the room full of people, only a handful actually understanding who the fucking Big Diesel was. He was very close <laughs> to calling out when he called my name, calling out Big Diesel. And he said, as Jackson was standing there, he goes, I was a whole lot closer to calling out Little Diesel <laughs> when, when I named George. So, I mean, you could have just gone, you know, you could have just gone, you know, like Glenn, yeah, Big Diesel. But, you yeah. know, like, Can I tell done. you, in, in, the, in the days of fucking rappers and like, names that back in our day you would be shot for having like Lil D's is not the worst fucking <laughs> it's name. not the worst no. one no. <laughs> he already hates come it up with. he already hates the fact that someone suggested it um, yeah. because you know at 16 years of age anything um, that ties him to me in any capacity outside of his actual DNA he's just, he's just is, unspeakable is, and, is yeah. repulsive so yeah, yeah we can't have that <laughs> Um, 
but very, very chuffed to uh, to be acknowledged and um, yeah, great night. A few shots had <laughs> late in the evening, bit of a headache Sunday morning, I'll be honest, but uh, yeah, just, I don't know, I've never fucking won anything like that in my life and it makes me, uh, makes me want to come out next year and you know, maybe have a crack at a or something. You know, I don't want to set the set the bar too high. Did, too sorry, high. sorry, can you? Sorry, you, oh, you there was, <laughs> I'm there not saying it again. Mic, <laughs> there was crackle on your mic. Then did you say? Uh, did you say A grade? <laughs> You're gonna skip a grade. Is that what you're telling me? No, no. Uh, C grade, unless they push me down to D. I don't, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Mate, D's you call diesel, you, though, too, you, I was going to say you want to call yourself Big Diesel. This is fucking only one place for you. D grade, but you might, but you might get like you, you might get like fifty tries in D for Diesel. I reckon, I reckon I'd go alright. I've said it before. I'm, I'm happy to stand on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, just also, you know, and I hate to give the man fucking two mentions in one podcast, but there is talk that Cash Money is uh, making a comeback to touch football next year. And we will be on opposing teams. Oh, oh, really? Yes. I thought he was going to. Come. Okay. So who? So who does? So who does he claim Saints? Sharks. He's played for the Sharks. Yes, yeah, previously sharks. years ago. Yeah. I don't. I, yeah, I didn't so see. What, I didn't what's see the them go in the there? final. Is, is there some uh, like some geographical significance? Uh, yeah, I think back in the day the clubs were aligned with the the rugby league. Um, so we've got Roosters, which is Valley's Roosters. Um, Lions is, is Newtown. Lions. Um, Saints is aligned with Brothers, which is a little weird. Um, and then Sharks and All Stars are tied in. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that that side of things works, which makes it weird. Which is probably the perfect place for Cashy to ply his trade. So uh, yeah, it could be could be interesting. There'll be some stray elbows next year. I can tell you on the wing if. Uh, the diesel. He's gonna, park, he's gonna he's gonna park himself out there as well, is he? Oh, he'd have to, wouldn't he? Where else is he gonna fucking play? I don't know. The diesel and cash money. Oh, please. <laughs> hey, Tell you what, worth the touch, price of admission. Touch touch football. <laughs> fucking just, get, your just, get your doubles. Get your doubles for fucking just one diesel matchup. and cash money. <laughs> one matchup on one side of the field where the fucking touch is a like fucking like Dana White slap elbows. <laughs> Oh, brilliant! But no, very, uh, very chuffed to to be acknowledged in any way. And uh, look, I won't say like I feel like I deserve it, but I showed up every week and I gave my best. My best wasn't welcome, ne- nearly good enough. Buddy, because I mean, there's no way without the extra pressure that you put on yourself by revealing the the whole touch thing on on fucking air, knows. and then us taking you know taking the D's thing and fucking championing it and making it even bigger. I mean. It really when it did. comes to awards and stuff like name name brand recognition, it goes a long fucking way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, uh, as the most yeah. famous player in your team, <laughs> probably in the entire club across all grades, if we're oh, being honest. Fuck. No, please who don't else, say that. Who, who else? Oh, people that have Outs- actually played for Australia. Yeah, <laughs> outside of the touch scene, though. Yeah, are we talking you're mainstream? Right. I'm not talking about like the fucking in the little in the little niche of of touch football world. I couldn't name a single play, touch player like, except for Big D's. Well, you know, Brad, you know, Jackson. You know, yeah. Nate, People you, know, you actually know. Met on the day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Other than those kinds of <laughs> Brilliant. Like, I Brilliant. couldn't tell you who, you know, I couldn't tell you anybody who played for Australia. I mean, you know, no way. Um, but Big D's, famous as shit. I will tell you, we, uh, we had a, a moment, obviously... Things went down in the evening. We were all watching the football, and there's a few bit of a group of us parked up in front of the TV um, on the seats. And the the game was actually being cast through one of the boys' phones onto the big screen right. via KO. Yep. And um, I saw early, a little bit earlier, um, before the game had kicked off, um, Maddie's daughter had sent him a message saying, um, "I'm home now with love heart. I'm home now." dad you know just let, letting him know she'd got home safe because she'd um been dropping some stuff off or whatever yep so okay that's very interesting and um made sure that i went over to one of the other boys and said uh you uh hooked me up with maddie's number and uh, of course he did so i waited i bided my time and i waited till there was a little bit of a lull in proceedings in the game and proceeded to send maddie a text message that said 
hey, Maddie, can you resend those dick pics for me? Which flashed flashed up on the big <laughs> so screen. It was actually, like, <laughs> he was actually screen sharing. Not yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. That is a real oh, mistake. Oh, fucking bore the house down. He really was. <laughs> Brought the fucking house down. Uh, I also want to say <laughs> the fucking... <laughs> The, the general proceedings of, of people receiving their awards, there was some, you know, courteous clapping and stuff like that and the odd woo and stuff like that. Uh, C grade, most improved, Glenn Blakely. Fucking everyone went up. It just, it was a fucking massive cheer. And uh, most warm Most popular heart. and most famous clubman. Warm heart. Love it. So, so, so there you go. See, that, that says everything. Biggest cheer of the night. I mean, yeah, that shit doesn't come for no reason. By by the length of the straight. It's not because it's, it, it's not it's not because you're a good bloke or anything. Let me tell you. No, definitely well, it, not. It, it could be because of the fake newspaper article he pinned on the wall that, <laughs> back in fucking post World War Two Toowoomba touch football. Yeah. The grand it's the like, grandfather I'm just of fucking Forrest Gumping it. I'm just p- putting That's myself it. into all these famous touch football <laughs> fucking moments in Toowoomba. Yes. Oh, uh, how good! It's it called the the, ori- the original Diesel or ODs. <laughs> oh, Re- fuck! Res- rescued forty five orphans <laughs> while playing in a match. Yeah, it's look, it's how a long good. storied history of one fuck yeah. t- one third seasons. There we go. We've done touch and we've done the games. So exactly. Good. So um, I don't know. Did you put a thread up for the socials following the games at all? Nah. And if so, would you like to go through it? Nah. Okay, yeah, good, all right, good. I, that's, I, was, I, was, I didn't think I saw one, but and I was just why? checking. No, because was... we're at that stage of the year where we don't give a fuck. Yep, that's <laughs> it. Penrith are officially the greatest team of the NRL era. Oh, here we go. Uh, no, one, literally no one's saying that, but that's all right. That's yeah. okay. You can say it, though. You're, you're in the media, I guess. I, I don't I don't think you know what the word literally means, because I just did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you know, I mean, kind of like yeah, accredited media, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, it, an indication like. of how far you've fallen in my eyes, Jay. Is you, you fucking you sound you sound like Trotters. You're, choo- you're choosing yeah. to listen to fucking Buzz Rothfield yeah. over me. You sound like you sound like fucking Trotters talking about St George, and I don't know if I can insult you any harder than that. Yeah, look, someone will probably come and take my kids now. <laughs> Dragons fan. <laughs> So that's really <laughs> yeah, yeah. It gives it gives them a future they wouldn't have otherwise have had. I'll take, someone, the, I'll take I'll take the new one. I was going to say someone almost stole the newest one. Oh, he's <laughs> awesome. Oh, we good. Oh, he's awesome, and he's a big he's a big he's a big fan of Nate too. Oh my oh, god, loves Unky Nate. Oh, oh we had oh, he was great. Fucking I love him. Loves a bit of Unky Nate. So, yeah, we instantly fucking hit it off like that. We boys. It was um, now. In, in the the entranceways to Unky Nate's house, on one side the wall has a like wall length mirror, yeah, and on the other side has a, a like a portrait painting, yeah, and it's freaked the fuck out of the baby because on one side he turns his head and he can see himself and he moves and he waves back and he does all this thing, but then the portrait is standing bolt fucking still. Yeah. <laughs> and we we he, won't pop, we won't see him pop out too, just quietly. Was, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, no, it was good. Um, also good, very fucking good. Well, you know, not for Glenny, but for, for the two of us. Uh, saw some news articles coming out on oh, what day is it today? Friday, so like probably around Wednesday. That there's there was some kind of loggerheads or some dispute and failure to meet common ground between Fittler and the New South Wales Rugby League when they were talking about, you know, re-upping him for coaching. And then, like, an hour later, then it's like he's he's resigned as, as New South Wales coach. I wonder and what the loggerhead was. We, <laughs> we would like think... you to win. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no I think thanks, I, I can't. I can't Look, do that. Put the, let, the, let the players wear their fucking boots because this touching grass hippie bullshit is, is fucking ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, so I, I think it was probably uh, about advisors or coaching staff. They wanted to insist came on board because obviously the fucking media yes men like you know Brandy and stuff were are fucking hopeless at selections well he, he's gone tactics. Brandy resigned yeah he's gone yeah so he's already gone so those kinds of guys are all fucking rubbish and so maybe they were trying to get a proper football coaching mind in there to assist he, him somewhat here's, here's the thing I'm not even yeah the selectors are different to coaches who are different to advisors hmm. and Brandy's job 
should be to get in with whatever fucking halves they pick for that team. Yep. And run through fucking this is Origin football as a half. Mm-hmm. Here is the, 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 this is what you got to do. That that's his job. Yep. And and it should be no fucking more than that. Very similar. You know, I don't know. He obviously has different board responsibilities at Penrith, being the the intelligent human being that he is. But that's what he does with their halves program. That's what he knows. It's what he can teach. It's what he can can pass on. Um, how big a set of fucking balls does Fitler have to have to go to his employer, which is the New South Wales Rugby League, and make fucking demands around the rest of the employees? Like, Glenn, if you had someone come into you from some part of your fucking work and be like, I'll tell you, these fucking admin staff that you're getting in to do and this fucking salesperson that you're this and this is everyone around me. No. As my employer, I say to you, the fucking hell. Sacked. Yeah. Especially yeah, if you had achieved fucking zip. With, when, when it's your, your turn with, when it's your turn with the fucking generational yeah. talent. And it's crop. like, oh, fucking, here you go. Here's the, the fucking, I don't know, who's a, like a big digger, Caterpillar. Here's the Caterpillar account. Go on, you service all of the Cater diggers. <laughs> oh, fuck. Me. And they've made zero sales. That sounds like vaguely racist. And I know it's not, but... <laughs> 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 um, they've made zero sales, and then they come in talking about how they don't want the admin staff you're looking to bring in. Yeah, so look, I, I, Fuck yeah, so me. without knowing all the behind the scenes situation, the fact is, I mean, like we've said before, like Origin is like it's an it's a super easy job as a coach because really the the, the games in the series are won by selections initially of the squad and tactics through the game and like interchange strategy and things like that, and they were all the things that were were fucked up under Freddie's watch, and you know, and obviously as a head coach, he's the one that has to to bear the brunt. I mean, he gets to... I, I don't think it was a situation where, like, he jumped as a safe face thing before he was pushed. I think they were prepared to re-up him for, like, a like another another year or so. And then he's, and then he's resigned. So it's, there's something in there. Like some, they've tried to enforce some sort of, you know, hire or addition to the team, the coaching team, that he's, you know, I don't know. Gus? I don't know, but I thought they were cool. But, uh... Anyway, he's gone, and so uh, Origin back on maybe a contest again. Um, Probably not. Dally M's. Not going to go through the entire fucking thing, but once again, well, not once again, but the structure of the voting, and this year with the new system where it's essentially double double votes on offer per game. Mm. Um, yeah, obviously, to, to, to make you know, they wanted to bring less sort of, I guess, variance on judges, you know, into it. Plus, they also wanted to make it exciting for the chase, so that a player could conceivably be behind by five points going into the last round and max points and win the win the thing. Yeah. Um, this year, Kalen Ponga won the Dalian Medal, for the NRL Player of the Year, in a season where he didn't play half of it, played shit for a quarter of it. And had a great run post Origin, a couple of weeks after Origin, for, for a period of nine games straight. Because he wasn't selected to play State of Origin. Yeah. Wasn't selected initially and then, then sort of D- dragged him out. Selection. Yeah. Decline, yeah. yeah. After injury. It... Yeah. Yep. So. <clears throat> now, can, over, we, short, can over, we point what... out there before, before we get all of you fucking strange little genetic mutants that wear knight's colours at us. <laughs> we understand that none of this is Kalen Ponga's fault. Yes. The only thing that is Kalen Ponga's fault is Kalen Ponga's personality, <laughs> which is reason enough for all of this slander anyway. However, the the football side of things and the way that the awards played out, he had nothing to do with that, and all he can do is get up there and be gracious, which I believe he was. So played rugby league under the in. system let's, provided. That's and... it. Let's put that there, and and had a fantastic back run of the season. Yes. So, you fucking but, little gremlins back <clears> in the box. Yeah, and then and, just, and look, and it's not just it's just not it's not just Cal at the at the top either. I mean, there's like a number of people in the top five. Um, Drinkwater was ineligible to 
to receive the award based on the you know the suspension he had. Suspension. But but just the number of votes he got that would have put him in third had he been eligible. Yeah. Only six points out of the actual win. Mm. Yeah. It's fucking alarming considering he was suspended for for so many yeah. games and was fucking AIDS for a number of games for too because the Cowboys yeah. only played half a season as well. So for him to accumulate that many points in that team is fucking crazy. Nico Hines, I mean, he was roundly all year. The story was how much that motherfucker fell off. Again, yeah. he didn't play the first five rounds either. Came back great, but they immediately fell off again. Like within, you know, certainly before, yeah, but even before, yeah, before, yeah, even before round that. ten sort of thing, yeah. yeah. And and then the the narrative for Nico Hines' season was by and large. So it feels like there's the, whoever that were, were doing the judging, there was still like a number, uh, uh, like a lot of this sort of name brand recognition, you know, narrative players like Nico. The issue is getting votes. That the entire fucking thing is a media farce. Now, yeah. compare that to, to other awards around the world, like the NBA MVP voting every year. Yeah, so, that, that, so talk, that talk them through also, that, to tell people how that works for those, so that, those who don't know. That, that is also a media award, mm-hmm. right? However, the, the difference is, here, it is run by one company. Yeah. So it is not actually the... Um, it's not like it's a consensus the, the media, media award or anything, yeah. You know? Uh, whereas over there, they award votes to different media members based on, you know, how serious they are and the tenure and what they do and are they a, a bona fide, do they have a history, have they shown that they they know what they're talking about? Um, the other issue is this thing about having to give points on every game means that it's always going to be stacked to players who aren't in the best teams. Because in the best team, like to win, to be in the upper echelon in this competition, you must be in... It's best to have no competition. Team. Yeah, it's, it's best Correct. to have no competition for points. Yeah. Exactly. So the entire thing's fucking flawed. Um, the... But then, and then you've got the next tier too. Like you've got, so you've got that tier. Like the the general premise of it is flawed. Yep. But then the application of it is also flawed. For example, Sean Johnson, um, like three rounds before the end of the season, game against Manly, where they dropped Ruben on his head, he got two try assists and two line break assists mm-hmm. in that, or two line breaks in that game. Yep. And kicked the field goal. Yep. Zero points. Yeah, that's it. So that's across two judges going one, two, three. Yep. None of them gave him even so much as a. You know, if one of them, if they both had said, "Yeah, okay, he's the third best player on his team," yes, he's won. The, he's won the award that he probably deserved. Over, you know, for much better form over the course of an entire season. That's it. Um, and it, when when you look at that, the NBA one, it's you don't just get one vote either. So you're mm-hmm. not just picking one player. You give a, a tiered system. So I think it, it's five cho- five. You you top five in a room. Mm-hmm. And they tally those votes. You get a number. Um, so vote, you're given five points to the guy who is your number one, so pick, who's your pick to be the MB, the, and then declining. No, 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 no. It scales. Ascending. So okay. your, fir- your first pick gets 10 points. Okay. Second gets seven, then five, three, one. Yep. Right? And it is... Which does over- allow, and that allows weight to be given to the first picks over exactly. other picks because there's a larger gap in the... Yeah. Now, it all, it, it's not perfect. <laughs> And it is heavily skewed towards recency bias. Mm-hmm. You know, so a player that has been, let, let's, you know, just to put percentages on it for the point of discussion, let's say there's been a player that's been playing at at 90% all season. Yep. There was one player that was playing at 80% for two thirds of the season, but then at 95 for the back end. Yep. They come into the conversation. Play, playing better at the time. You know? when they're, And yeah. and the, the player that was at 95 at the beginning of the season and then drops off to 80 falls out of contention. Mm. You know? Because it's like, uh, well, they're not the best now. Yeah. So, it, again, it's not not perfect. No, but it's, it's, not, it's not perfect. But the thing about the, the, the NBA one is that generally you get it's it's you, you certainly get a, a majority or a consensus that the person that ultimately wins it, they go, yeah, he was a... He was amazing. Yeah, he was. The, yeah. He was. He he was the guy. And there's there's still the the discussions around that of who is the most valuable. Is yeah. it just the best player in the league? Yeah. Or is it 
the, is the best player on the best team more valuable? Or yeah. is it the player who is actually the most valuable to his team? Mm-hmm. That without him, his team does worse. There are yep. people that have been in MVP contention. You take him out of their team, the team still does okay. Yeah. Are they the most valuable player if their team's okay without them? But the, the major issue here is it's a fucking Daily Telegraph rule. Mm-hmm. And they have, and I'm, I'm almost convinced at this stage it's unconscious, that they have their narrative players and they really fucking believe, or they, they've drunk the Kool-Aid, because they've been told that these players get the clicks and they would understand what sort of articles get the clicks Mm -hmm. in that. Okay. So great. So the general public will be happy with our decision. If we give the Dally M to this person, no, no one would say that that's not a, not an issue. Um, if this person is voted the best player in the league this year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, absolute fucking joke. Yep. Um, the other one, I mean, like, obviously, uh, great to see uh, Andrew Webster get the coach of the year, and I think, I mean, he should have been pretty much fucking unanimous, uh, given what he managed to achieve with the Warriors. Um, the only other one that you could say was controversial, or, the, I mean, and I don't know, maybe it's just that I follow a lot of Tigers fans, but the rookie of the year with uh, Glenn's mate, Jareen Buller, not winning the award. How do you, what do you think about that, Glenny? I haven't spoken to you about it. The oh, sentiment I was getting in the comments on the thing, you know, where the post the, where they announced that uh, on the NRL Twitter, it was just fucking Dream Buller City in the comments. Yeah, look, I get it. Um, he was a shining light for a shit team, um, and yeah, I think he, I think he probably was was definitely entitled to to win. Um, he, he certainly would have got my vote, but I, I don't know that you can shit on a guy for winning Rookie of the Year when he had some legitimate standout moments in a team that's probably going to go down as one of the best, well, the best club side in the history of the sport. And in his first year, he's had some legitimate standout games and, and, and outstanding moments and finishes. Um, there's an argument can be made that that's that's harder to do than standing out in and amongst a bunch of scrubs. It's almost the reverse of coach of the year. Like in, anyone that says, "Oh, Ivan should be coach of the year because it's the fourth grand final and what he's done has never been done before," and you know, Craig Bellamy had to cheat to do it, and he's considered a, a great coach. Um. It's harder to do what Webster's done, and takes they maintain, more yeah. exactly, and takes more actual coaching. And again, there's a team of them, a whole fucking staff of guys that attribute to the to the success. But it is harder to do that. Which and Glenny, I I agree with what you're saying. It's harder to stand out and be recognised in a team like that, rather than it is to be the young kid with speed on a team that. Uh, probably where where pen and this is the yin and yang of the universe you know what they say like you know na- nature abhors a vacuum for the level of greatness that the panthers have achieved in being the greatest side ever there is a yang to that yin and that is the west tigers being the worst side in the history Look, I, I was actually trying to be you know like serious <laughs> yeah, that was a real and actually, that was a, and, that was unnecessary <laughs> and and i just feel like <laughs> glenny, glenny was being nice and like actually saying shit on your side and then you just come and fucking give him that one at the end clip on I the didn't, well, through. what i was doing was <laughs> I, I, didn't I was do actually shit. being honest and truthful. i wasn't out there fucking you should try it sometime <laughs> yeah. i wasn't out there being a fucking mid fullback <sighs> come on come on but no. Now, moving along. But again, I'm with you. Who fucking cares about the Dally M's? Yeah. Honestly, who Hang on, fucking cares? When did I say that? I, no, 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 no. This you is said, what I'm saying. You, you, you implied it with the way you looked. With rook, Rookie of the Year? Again. <laughs> okay. I said, said I cared more inside. about winning C grade most improved than I did about winning the Dally M. Quite frankly, well, it's yeah. harder to do. I'm gonna, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, I... You didn't poll well in the Dalian. <laughs> <Just being honest. laughs> That's because I'm not a media narrative guy. All oh, right, okay. 
So yeah, so you're off Buller then because I'm equally. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know what other other stories you guys want to talk about, but um, there's a couple of grand final related ones where um, one of them today, where the Broncos are down in Sydney in the lead up to the game, and uh, walking around Circular Key, and apparently a Penrith fan said something along the lines of um, Moses Leota will take your head off this weekend. Reese Walsh responds saying, I'll take your mum's. <laughs> and the media, and like I saw photos of the kid, he's just laughing because he got exactly what he wanted. Yeah. He, he, he got some fucking bands <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a player <laughs> in the grand final. Um, but the he media got... have taken it and like, it's an ugly incident with a Penrith fan. The kid is clearly upset. <laughs> <laughs> and the NRL integrity unit was notified. By who? Uh, by the journo? Fucking, by rat fucking snitch bastard. That, who? Oh. I, don't know. I don't know who, but I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, it is fucking ridiculous. But I just, I, I just had to, had to uh, mention that one because um, I thought, wow. Wasn't it great when the fucking there was no me, you know, when, when the media weren't allowed to say shit about anything? I mean, this is like, you know, um, the other one is this wonderful fucking story, heartwarming. You, the one thing you get around this time, Origin and Grand Final times, is the family human interest story, right, Glenn? Hey, sorry, so can I, I just, agree with can you. I just pause for one second here. Sure. Um, the fucking here I am thinking that it was the the Daily Telegraph clowns that were voting for Daly M. Right? Uh, who are the judges for the voting process for the Daly M? I just wanted to check this. The judges will be taken from a select pool of former players assigned to the role for the 2023 season. The identity of judges will be kept anonymous for the entirety of the Daly M medal process, ensuring the independence of voting and the integrity of the voting between the two judges are completely separate. Yeah, that's yeah, well, not, which, which doesn't that doesn't work because I'm not sure how that guarantees if, that. For argument's all. sake, if a fucking ex Newcastle player was one of the anonymous judges and started fucking throwing throwing sixes yeah. on Callum Pong, I mean, you know, what I mean, like, it's um, but how has anyone double checked whether these fucking the judges from a select pool of former former players? Is fucking Mick Ennis, Gordon Tallis, Matthew yeah. Johns. Well, I mean, the whole reason, you know, the reason why the reason why it's anonymous like that, and the reason why they've doubled up the the vote the votes per game was because you didn't so you didn't get situations like Ruan Sims not even watching the fucking game and yeah, throwing votes on it. You know? Exactly. Like, fuck. Anyway, farce. Yep. Now, anyway, back to back to this human interest story. I mean, I don't often bring it up. Often we dismiss them in, in when we're doing the news for the show. We're just like, "There's nothing but human interest stories." Blah blah blah. Moving right along, right? But this one caught my eye, and I had to bring it to your attention, Glenny, because I know that I know that Jay's seen it. Um, Payne Haas said that a Broncos grand final victory will help lift the spirits of his family, including his mother and younger brother, who are facing manslaughter and drug supply and trafficking offences. Well, he's right. So, to paraphrase, uh, some can we, of the, can uh, we just what what sorts of things make baby murderers and drug dealers happy, Glenn? Broncos grand finals. There we go. Yeah, I mean it's it's there in black and white. Yeah. Um, and look, you know, to paraphrase something you said on Twitter, and just, the thought that crossed my mind is like, if you're on the fence about who you want to support in the grand final, I don't know if. The Panthers' win is uh, going to. Let's be honest. There's a lot worse shit going on in Penrith, and, uh, well, you know, I mean, the, the Panthers' win might bring some fathers back into the fucking home, or something, mate. I don't know. Something unless, wholesome like that. Unless Martin Bryant all of a sudden comes out in a licorice all sorts jersey, it's hard to fucking top that one. It is hard to fucking top that one. Could you imagine that? That cunt, though? Can you that imagine that though, like worse. Martin Bryant take a photo in the fuck in Risden or wherever the fuck he is, like a photo of him going up the pars though? Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? The only thing that cunt is worse at reading than rooms is fucking books. What like sound of him? <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah. shit. Um oh, look, on that note, there's been a lot of fucking talk. Um 
and it's all started by one select Broncos fan, about trying to prove that the Broncos are the team of the people and that everyone actually really likes the Broncos and that no one likes Penrith and this. And what I would like to say to you is... A little bit needy, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's fucking gross. It's it's like... Oh, um, and look, like, and, and I also ugh. just want to just interject as an aside to say that the person himself is one of the more like, you know, like very like confident and comfortable with being outside of the fucking norm person. Like seems to like position like Or is position. this a cover? Or is Maybe. it all a fucking So you're ruse. saying the Broncos are actually like revealing something about his entire yes. personality and existence. That need for love and nurturing. Right. right. However, as real fans of rugby league understand, you don't fucking want neutrals. Neutrals can go fuck themselves because their shit cunt teams aren't good enough to be in the grand final where yours is. You sit there and you laugh at every fucking bandwagoning neutral coming on to find reasons to tall poppy themselves into hating your club. Fucking drink hey, it up. Bud, can you just, just you give me two secs? I've just got to take that new Penrith jersey out of my back, out of my carry-on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's going to get a little awkward. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not going to stop you from doing it. Fuck you do you. it. You fucking do you. I should have right? a serial fucking bandwagging burning a team of into it. A, Bandwagging a team in the grand final is, that, is worse than carrying a second team around with you for 26 rounds. Yeah. For the regular season. Frankly. Now, again... If you want to hope one team wins more than another, fucking oath, do you. Bet on it. If you need to gamble to give yourself that interest, you do that. That's the thing. You don't don't support, don't don't emotionally but, shackle yourself to one of the teams that you don't support. Just fucking emotionally shackle yourself to your fucking money. That's and it. bet on it. Like, However, don't need the fucking validation of the neutrals. Don't seek it out. Don't want it. Don't be beholden to it. It's a fucking loan you'll never repay. I'd also like to address certain points that have been said about um, how everyone's sick of Penrith's um, technically perfect brand of rugby league and everybody likes Brisbane's attractive style of play. And we'll break this down for a second. Both of those things don't have to be true. Well, here's the thing. Penrith do play a beautiful game of rugby league. It is a beautiful fucking brand of football that they play. It is gorgeous, and it is almost flawless. And people tune in by their fucking millions every week to watch rugby league, right? The highest rating TV shows every single year without failing are State of Origin, the Rugby League Grand Final, right? In the nation, people want to watch rugby league more than anything else. Do you know what Brisbane have? They have one egotistical fast guy. Do you know what no one in the nation tunes in to watch? Fucking athletics. Even every four years, when the fastest people on the fucking planet do it, 10% of the country watches. So stop trying to say that Brisbane's brand of football is fucking attractive. Aaron Norton just passed out. Ah, Look... (laughs) Fucking someone's getting caught with strays. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you're fucking driving by. Fucking <laughs> Doing drive-bys at Carrara. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Um, sorry, on to the next news item. All right, so well, I, I don't really... I don't, I don't have any other ones I really want to talk about, to be honest. Do we want to talk um, about the West Tigers... Um, oh fuck yeah not a news item thank you for reminding me because I almost fucking skated through there and completely missed it. so today and uh, there were several members of uh, of the nation at this event the the West Tigers grand final luncheon event that was I believe at the uh, at the ICC which is funny because I mean that was one, one thing that no one's brought up that it was actually at the at, at, at the cunt international cunt circus at, uh, <laughs> which I think is down like um, is it, it's down like a uh, uh, like uh, Darling Harbour or whatever, like down where, like the down near where yeah. the the um the Navy Museum and shit is, right? And um underwater world stuff. Okay, so we know we know you know several people that were there, and uh, yeah, Glenn's mate, yeah, Sam, good mate of his. Um, he, he was nope. there, and uh, yeah, and 
this was a three hundred dollar ticket event for those who had to pay to go there. Um, and this event uh, basically highlighted in many, in many, many ways. Just, uh, just what the, I mean. The West Tigers fans they went there probably in not an amazing mood because they're coming. It's a spoon season, and I mean, you don't. There's nothing really to celebrate in terms of celebrating your club kind of thing. But you want to have a good time. You, they roll up to the to the ICC, and two events were on simultaneously today. <laughs> on level five in the Grand Ballroom Convention Centre, the West Tigers Grand Final Lunch in 2023. In the uh, the Piermont Theatre Convention Centre on level two of the ICC, the New South Wales Voluntary Assisted Dying Conference 2023. <laughs> if it it's so fucking perfect, they're the same thing. That I it it's so it's so perfect. I can't believe it wasn't fucking photoshopped because. <laughs> but I've seen the same photo with different shading and taken from a slightly different angle and shit. I've seen at least three, four different versions of the photo. So not only did it happen, but multiple West Tigers fans go up to that event and they all were hit in the face with the same big bat of irony. And like, and, and it was and like, oh, <laughs> that's worth a photo. Isn't that funny about, about me and my club that I support? Um, <laughs> So other other things, I I didn't get a huge breakdown. I got a, I got a bit of a highlights package from Sam about what what happened there. He um he got a football like one of those old style like leather leather footballs, and he got it signed by some of the old boys in attendance. I can't remember off the top of my head who all of them were, but Timmy Rasher was there. Um, he brought the old school was, leather football along because he's yeah. Who who else was there that was good? I'm trying to think who was who was there. like Hino was there. Um, uh, Halitau was there. Uh, Tim Grant was one of them, and I had to remark that you know his, his autograph on a football probably devalues it if anything. Um, <laughs> no, Steve Edmed, which was a disappointment to all all true fucking Balmain fans. I know that. Um, certainly the guy, the name I expected to see. So oh, yeah. that's that's the old boys. That's great. You know these things usually you know, have the old boys sort of scattered about, and you know, and apparently um, Hino, a conversation with Hino is like a conversation with any of us. At like a grand final meetup or whatever. Fuck yeah. apparently, apparently, that motherfucker just he just slides right in like the, like any of us would into a conversation, and he's great value. Um, ten out of ten for Hino. I'm, uh, and Timmy Brash was well high marks. Let's talk about current people though. It's the off season, so of course there's going to be a segment, you know, potentially a large amount that are that are of players that are sort of you know in Bali Available. or you know yep. in in Vegas or you know, on a holiday somewhere, right? You see the photos on Insta. All these players are on holidays, um, so you don't get too many of them. But there was one person. From the current squad, top thirty there, Appy. Appy fronted up and did the did his job. That's it, just Appy. <laughs> coach, Coach Benji Marshall did appear there, but apparently he pieced out real quick. Like <laughs> he was there, for, he was there, in, he was there for literally minutes. Um, it's a club event. You'd think you'd see the fedora there or Pasco, maybe. No shows, complete no show. So really, it was just these old boys doing the heavy lifting. Then you had 10 people sat at a table, right? Each seat was numbered. They had to bring out a chocolate wheel, spin the chocolate wheel, and you can win one of these footballs, you know, and get them signed by the old boys there. So, you know, it's great. You got a one in 10 chance of winning, right? Yep. Cho- chocolate wheel comes out, numbers one to 10 on it, except there's there's 16 segments on the pie Fuck of the wheel. Hell. So they spin the wheel. So, 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 so they spin. I've, I've got vi- and I've got video of this. I've got video of the wheel like this to show you. Like, but, um, <laughs> so they spin the wheel right because you know, and if it comes up like you know, for example, if you're Fuck. in seat number two, if, if, it, if it lands, if it lands on number five and, and you're in seat five, then you've won the footy. Congratulations! You've won ten chances. To their credit, to their yeah. credit. I'm sure they couldn't envision it going any higher than nine. But... <laughs> right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, right. But um, <laughs> so, welcome the to the wheel. David Nofaluma chocolate wheel. <laughs> <laughs> we struggle to count numbers defensively and on a wheel. <laughs> and the thing is, because because it had like the 16 segments in it, the numbers it didn't just go like you know one through to ten and then like a big gap. It was kind of like they had some spaces in between the other numbers, right? And so they spin it. First time they spin it. Comes down, lands between in the in the blank space between one and two, yeah. And, sort of, and so there's some discussion there, like, oh, it's kind of closer to two. Do we award it to two? No, we're oh, going to no, we'll spin it just again. Just have ten even <laughs> fucking spaces on a wheel. This is not hard stuff. Right. Respin, spin it again. 
click, 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 comes around. Same exact spot between one and two. So eventually they do just say, fuck it, we'll give it to number two, right? So a, a big contributor um, to, to our Facebook group, Terry, he messages me. He's like, don't, you know, don't ask me why I was there. Cause he's, a, he's a doggies fan, I believe. But I was there. And he's, and he's telling me the story about the chocolate wheel. And they left it unattended up on the stage there. So he's gone up there to fucking have a look at it and spin it. And he's taken video of himself spinning it, right? And he spins it, click, click, comes around right between one and two again <laughs> but when you watch this when you watch this fucking thing spin what happens is you spin it in a certain direction and it spins around and then when the momentum starts to stop like you know like the wheel of fortune you think it's going to stop and land on the thing at the moment it stops and reaches like you know the end of its velocity it's like it goes in fast forward or re- rewind back the way you spun it and spins around a few more times so the thing was so fucked in like in the balance or whatever in the calibration that it was always only ever going to land in that exact same spot every fucking time. Um, so, look, there was who, a... who was the old Tigers player that was done for match fixing? Uh, Tim Simona. Is he is he now building chocolate wheels? Or yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't believe. I tell you what, I mean, if you're building if you're building the dodgy chocolate wheel, though, make it land on a fucking number that's on the <laughs> on thing. Though, really. Well, again, he he wasn't the fucking smartest guy. Well, no, no. well, he was selling. He was he was he was selling fraudulent shit on eBay too, or something, wasn't he? Is that, is that what, how he got caught? I can't remember what. It, yeah. Oh god. Or was that someone else? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, you know, eventful day uh, down down at the Look, West Tigers. I I can see how somebody sat around a fucking big brain exec table, and I have seen so many of these fucking things. And the issue with these big brain exec tables is there's no big brains at the over- table. Well, they overcomplicate fucking everything mm. because nothing is ever allowed to be unpleasant. So I can see how they've sat around that big brain exec table and said, look, um, fucking Fedora and Pasco, you guys are not popular. On the nose uh, a bit, so yeah. You know, that's it. So give this one the slide. Um, and we're just going to send the old boys in. Right? The team isn't popular because they didn't have a great season. And, uh, you know, mental health and yada, yada, yada. And there might be something to be said for that about getting guys from the top squad in there. To but cop- also, they are they are on they are on holiday too, so there's no, not necessarily it, a... I know, but even... Yeah. But App, Appy, it would be hard for any fan to be there and run at Appy personally for his contribution. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, you could throw um, Buller in there if he, if he was around as well, you know. I mean, he'd, he'd get locked oh, on as well. Based on the Dally M's, they'd probably fillet him, but... <laughs> Um, the, the and a good deal. I mean, let's be real. It's a good deal. Yeah, like, the the thing of um, you know, we'll send the old boys in there. Everyone loves old boys, and we'll send Appy in there, and that you know that that's a positive interaction experience. Mm-hmm. Whereas realistically, it probably should have been. Yep, we've had the worst season that that could have been imagined. We've had the worst thrashing in in the club's mm-hmm. history, completely negating the biggest win in the club's history. Yep. Um, we need to face the fucking music on this. So everybody, book sessions Front with your therapists afterwards. Yeah. Cop the fucking music. Yeah. yeah. The, other, the thing is as well, I mean, it's also like, what, like when you're charging $300, I don't know how many tickets That's are it. sold to this, but you're charging $300 That's for it. a lunch. And I mean, you, you, you're revenue raising for something, whether it's a club or a charity or whatever, I'm not sure. He, but here is the media training beforehand of the five fucking canned responses. Yep, I'm terribly sorry. I can't argue with anything that you've said. Next year is going to be fucking we're, dope. We're looking forward to it. We've got, you know, Benji fucking blah, blah, blah. We're as and, disappointed as you are, and yep. we are working day and night to find the causes and to make improvements. Got Thanks tons of confidence sti- in Benji. Thanks for sticking with us. Yep, yep. That's yep. it. Yeah, because what, and like, you know, West Tigers fans that were in attendance at this event can, can certainly, um, you know, have their say and, uh, you know, debate whether this is true or not, but... An impartial non Tigers fan who was in attendance did say that if Glennie had been there, he would have gotten a fight by the end of it because the mood just was getting more depressed and more depressed as it went on. And by the end, everyone was just like so fucked off with the club <laughs> that it just wasn't yeah. great. The, the, like when you say the vibes are immaculate, like whatever the opposite of that is. <laughs> so, yeah. 
But I've, right I've seen it so many fucking times. We're trying to sugarcoat something. Gets the exact opposite reaction of what you hope it will. And what you should have done was actually get down in the trenches and just be like, yep, it was shit. Yep. Yep. So. Just the, right. the whole thing with the club is there's, there's such a disconnect of accountability. And there was an opportunity there for, for them to actually put a full stop and, and put this season in the bin, but be accountable for it and move forward from it. Instead, they, they had all their... They fucking stiffed all the people there for 300 bucks a ticket and and couldn't actually look anyone in the eye. And that's pretty fucking disgusting. Tell you what, do you know all that this story's taught me? That if you could be going to a fucking $300 a head luncheon... Probably not a Tigers fan. Fucking mid, midday on a Friday... Well, I either need to start fucking, you know, doing dubbing on movies or fucking being overly positive on Twitter. Because those <laughs> things fucking pay the bills. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, they were paying the bills and then, you know, you're on strike. So you've got a heap of fucking spare time. May as well go on. Oh, that's true. You make an excellent point, everybody. Right. Grand final. Let's go. Panthers versus Broncos. The... Uh... Two teams haven't met for quite some time. It was uh, the last meeting was uh, back in way back in round twelve, and their first meeting, of course, was the opening game of the season. The Broncos narrowly got that one. Panthers had a uh, relatively you know, small win in the return bout in round uh, 12, 15 to four. Yeah. Let's go through, Glenny. What do you reckon? I think Brisbane need to completely dominate the first twenty minutes of the game to have any chance of winning. And I think the chances of Brisbane doing that are very fucking slim. Um, they they need to have an all-time grand final start to give themselves a chance. Um, unfortunately, there's going to be... There has, has to be an element of jumpiness or whatever from some of these guys that haven't played in grand final before. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the likes of Walsh, um, Staggs, Herbie... Um, that you know, Ezra Mam, there's a, there's a swag of them. Guys that haven't played you know, even in the the arena of origin, um, and they're coming up against guys that you know play in grand finals like it's any other Sunday. So I think Penrith are too experienced in in a game like this. I think to win three in a row is a real motivator for Penrith. And, they, you know, they've got they've got motivation. Um, they can go into the game better prepared than, than most sides in the NRL era, having, you know, this being their fourth grand final in a row. And I just think the occasion may just get to Brisbane and not allow them to have the start that they need in order to give themselves a chance of winning. So I think Penrith will win. Do you make anything of the weather forecast for the day with uh, Sydney being smashed with uh, something like 35 degrees on Sunday, 37? Yeah. And, and around the time we get to the start of the game, they're talking sort of 30, 31. Fuck, is it really, really going to be that fucking hot? Yeah, apparently. Fucking please wear deodorant to the meetup. <laughs> please. <laughs> Bring it with you. Bring it with you. Hand sanitizer if you need to. That kills bacteria. Just It's like sunscreen. Every two hours, reapply, you stinky cunts. Um, yes, it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be uh... So it's going to be it's going to be grim temperature down, down there. But I mean, playing a game of football, a grand final, at 7pm where things should be backing off and it's still over 30 degrees. Yeah. Fucking ordinary areas. Yeah. Um, Look, and I think Panthers. I think Panthers, in terms of conditioning, I think that helps them. Yeah, agree. There, there's there's a bunch of different ways that you can look at that, though. You know, everyone is going to be fatigued, and there are a bunch of players on that Broncos side whose only redeeming feature is their speed. And so, any extra fatigue in any player in front of them is an advantage. 
Um, the biggest danger to Penrith is the NRL. That's the biggest danger. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm no. even I'm even um, scared to ask why, but I'll play stupid fucking well, game. Why? We, we've already seen that they are on a massive push to grow revenue. Yeah? And part of doing that is that they're taking a bunch of sides to Las Vegas next year. So the NRL have already shown that they will blatantly cheat to get the Broncos into the grand final. Um, you know, Brisbane... The Broncos have been to Sydney three times this season to play. They've had the softest draw of any team in the history of the sport. That's not true. They have away games. Well, the Sharks won a premiership on a soft draw, but you know. on the I, I saw I saw a, a, a calculation like on the the strength of draw based on how teams are how good they are this year, mm. which is the only way you can really base a strength of draw. You know, instead of like basing on what teams did last year, based on this year the the tied, tied hardest strength of draw. It was tied Broncos and Manly. Now, the what what does mitigate the Broncos' strength of draw and de- and decrease it somewhat is, like you said, the fact that they played home or in Brisbane exactly. pretty much every and fucking it mit- game. Mitigates it mitigates it to the extent of being the softest draw <laughs> in the history of fucking anything. <laughs> Fuck me, dead. I never thought I'd see the day where like, you'd sound like Trotters and Nate in the same episode of this show. The, the mitigation, fucking, the fucking get mitigation. Me on you, I'm, the I just, mitigation I'm was harder checking. than their draw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, people um, who are listening can't see the look on your face. So at the like, NRL, you got that look on your face, like going, "I'm saying a thing right now." <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe people are listening to this shit? <laughs> Jesus um, Christ. <laughs> But it would do fucking wonders for the NRL to go over to Las Vegas whenever that is next year. Because mm. let's be fucking real, none of the other teams they're taking over there are a prime example of what rugby league is or how to play it well. Oh, and they're only taking the big clubs. I mean, that's obviously a fact. No, they're taking the fucking ones that have dirt or that are owed favours by the NRL. Um, you know, the... the the NRL knows that Rusky's got fucking 47 mutant Burgess fetuses locked down in his basement somewhere <laughs> that he'll unleash if they don't take the fucking rabbits. Um, anyway, so, the game it, itself. Let's talk about the game itself. The, 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 NRL, the NRL, it is quite possible that there have been instructions to fucking refs fault the Broncos into the Premiership, which will be the only way they can win. Um, Penrith to three-peat and cement their legacy. Look, I think I think Panthers will win. There's a couple of reasons why, and I mean, and none of them are. I've just given you the reasons. No, no, no. None of them. Are, none of them are what I would say generously. Generously. <laughs> just as the narrator, Jay bullshit. still has that same look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> I think that I think the conditions are most definitely suited to the Panthers, and I mean, even even the fields, like the even the even the way the fields play. Uh, Lang Park, shockingly, is Suncorp is is conducive to the Broncos, and I don't think that um, that Homebush is. Uh, the temperatures and everything. I think Panthers. Is, I think the one the one thing that the Panthers have have had over the last couple of seasons is like superior conditioning and shit like that. So I think that in given the conditions and the temperatures, that's going to be a factor. Now, in terms of the actual style of play, the way the teams play. That's the only. That's the part where it's actually a good matchup, and I hope that the other stuff doesn't actually. In, mm. Yeah, because I think that the Panthers are going to win the middle very easily, and if the Broncos can can somehow mitigate that, or you know, draw level in that aspect of the game, and like yeah, it's going to be obviously a worldie from fucking you know Payne Haas and Carrigan and stuff to do so. Uh, if they can do that though, then it gives them a real chance because. The one weakness that you were talking about with Panthers in the game against the Storms last week is the one thing that the Broncos do best: quick shifts and you know shit out wide. Exactly. Everyone like I mean, you know, Manly did it. The Warriors like there, there are teams. Any team that has success against the fucking the the Panthers in any facet of a game, that's how they're doing it. Yeah, and so and that's something the Broncos do very well. So if they can if they can do that and execute it, and, that, and then that's fucking it. if they and, can do that cleanly, they're they're a fucking problem. Yeah, and this is the thing. There, I mean, 
out of out of all the teams in the competition that that have tried to do that, they're certainly the ones that have the best chance to actually execute that. You know, yep. In in the way it needs to be for like you know a very high success rate uh, for a very large part of the game, yeah. Mistake free, and if they can do that, then fuck. I mean, there's definitely I think there's definitely points to be had there yep. for them. Um, yep. So it's it really it really falls on to like like Payne Haas he has to have he has to fucking rule the middle almost single handedly and just and try and fucking destroy Liotta and you know and, and Fish he has to have one of those games where he's just like a man like a, a guy in a fucking war doing it himself and allowing my only thing I'm I am really concerned for exactly this reason there are going to be a bunch of forwards and the Broncos especially that are saying we are coming up against the two best props that have ever played the game of rugby league. Um, <laughs> and they're going to try that fucking hard. I don't want I anyone, want and I mean for either side. Again. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm with you. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I don't want fucking head clashes and HIAs and, and all of that shit to rub any anyone out of that game because that would take away from what is going to be a fucking great contest. And that's, that's the only thing that's really going to happen because you know they're going to be... There. Yeah, you know, the whistle is going to go away for you know some of the incidental shit that you That's know because it. you know just the, the nature of the uh, look. I mean, um, the other thing is Adam G. refereeing it. Thank fucking god they didn't just back. They didn't just yeah. sit down into their regular fucking Ashley Klein fucking Sutton bullshit. Those guys that have had some absolute fucking shockers in the lead up in the finals and the later rounds of the season. There actually has been some accountability or, you know, like punishment for yeah. it. They, they're not getting the fucking big dance, which is a great move as well. Yeah. And I, about- hope, I hope they've been informed that. I, or, or not not even, look, I, don't, I hope, I'm not saying I hope they've been told that they're shit. I hope they've been told that it has been awarded based on merit. Yeah. The consequences, these are the decisions that have been made um, that have been clearly wrong. Grand finals, the showcase of the game, we need to be over. And yeah. based on that, Adam has shown us. That's with it. the highest, you know, frequency of making the right calls in the blah blah blah, whatever you want to. The way he handles front. games, the way he controls players. Well, yep, yep. And like, thank fuck, because the thing you were talking about with like forwards taking shit, and you know, like you know, trying to lift and lift their sides and everything. Like, if Ashley Klein was a guy refereeing, oh, you imagine? Can you, can you imagine the fucking? It'd be a good, be good old fashioned. Let's throw it back to the fucking mid seventies, Manly versus Sharks, where they uh, they did, they they played about three minutes of football, and the rest of it was just basically a fucking brawl. <laughs> oh god! Yeah. But uh, so there we go. Look, I mean, I, I I think that the Panthers will win, but you know, provided certain conditions are met, I think the Broncos can most certainly make a game of it and really as a neutral all I give a fuck about you know you want just an, an entertaining game that's good to watch yeah, like that's for example last year was shit um, you know 2020 was a good became a good game you know with 20 minutes to go but it was shit yep. for the, the you know the large majority just because it wasn't a competitive game um, the the one that we were at with the, the Rabbits 20, that, 21 that, was that, fucking that was a close yeah. game and competitive for Look, the last part so. I much preferred last year to 21 yeah, yeah. My, oh. I much preferred the last 10 minutes I should say that's... There is nothing like a grand final where you go into it knowing you're going to win and you're never threatened at any point on the way to the win. Like yeah, that was no, that it's... was 2011 for me. Like yeah. it's just so comfy. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but must yeah, be this... like what childbirth's like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's exactly. So easy. Yeah. It's just, you have you're having a great time. There's a great result at the end of it. Yeah, no it. pressure. No pain or stress no. at any point. That's it's, it. it's, it's incredible. Like heart rate goes up slightly. Yeah, periodically. Obviously, obviously it's the big it's the big game. Of course, you're going to yeah, elevate slightly. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Glennie's just, like, <laughs> just like right now. If you can see Glenny, I, I should take a picture. But um, <laughs> Glenny is just sitting there, just so checked out, and just like when is it, I'm just he was he's just waiting to hear the words. That's full time. <laughs> he can't wait. <laughs> Glenny. Yes, Nathan. I'm here. I don't. You know. I, I regret it. Tell me no, I regret it, but I'm here. <laughs> uh, so, is there anything to add to the grand final there, Glenny? Oh yeah. No, I think I've said all I need to say about you know what I think is going to happen in the contest. I I I'll probably echo what you guys um, said in the in the three fucking nanoseconds where you're actually talking sense. 
uh, in that I, I do, ho- I, what, I do what, hope it's what a good. Did I, say I do that, hope it's what a did good I say contest. That wasn't talking sense? Oh, everything, everything comes out of your mouth except when you said you <sighs> hope it's a good contest. So, so my theories about how the where the game could be won and lost without fucking trying to pump up weird shit like stepdad was. That, <laughs> Look, I, I'm going to be honest. My God. I'm going to be honest. Some of your shit got drowned out by fucking the absolute tidal wave <laughs> of fucking <laughs> trash. <laughs> yeah, my my thoughtful my thoughtful analysis was like the, a fucking guy on a fucking on the beach. All I could see and he was, was the- rubbish. <laughs> I, all I could see and he was rubbish. I thought I was in the fucking passenger seat of Sam Hayward's car (laughs) (laughs) ouch anyway so that's it that's 537 done (laughs) now look let's 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 talk meetups okay so midday at Bar Cleveland if you are a patron a member um, log in to to Patreon or on on your app and look at the exclusive invite Look at the timeline um, there and you'll see what the deal is. Look, at, at, at the risk of sounding crass, please don't come if you're not. We don't want to be a cunt and turn people away, but we will. It's a time that's set exclusively for those guys. They pay additional money um, for the the members' stuff, so please just respect that it's a special time for them. Um, from midday onwards uh, at Bar Cleveland, everyone is welcome. No cost. All, all and more, um, fucking bring whoever. Uh, the venue we are at does have a strict over-18s only policy, um, so please respect that. We would love. I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you can have. You, you can have. You can have. Like, if you if you want if you want to bring your kid or whatever, that's fine. But there's no unattended. Like, if you are listening to the show now and you are under eighteen, yeah, and you're not going with your dad or something, they're not. Yeah, you're not going to be able to. And look, even if you want to, please don't, because I don't want to have to explain to your dad who we are. <laughs> <laughs> and whilst people call us real dad and stepdad, we're actually not. Because <laughs> that's it. If I ever heard my kid listening to this and going, I'm going to go and meet real dad and stepdad this weekend, I'd be fucking going along with him too. I mean, that's like, that, that sounds more, that sounds worse than saying, I'm going to fucking Neverland to meet famous <laughs> pop star Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know? Do you know what my favourite part of the show is when they talk about the touch every week? Oh, I love the touch talk. <laughs> you just made this show something it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's also like uh, the, it's a C grade touch, though. Yeah. <laughs> really like, ordinary they touching. The, they, they, they go for the, they go for, they don't go for the surface level of A grade touching. They go all the way to C. Yeah. I really hope by next year they can get to A grade touching. Yes, and if you're in Brisbane, 2 p.m. Wing House at Bowen Hills. If you're familiar with the yeah you know, where the Ecker is, I believe it's King Street there at Bowen Hills, uh, directly across the road from Ridges, uh, right there in the Ecker precinct. Um, 2 p.m. till the grand final is done. Be there. Um, we've had a pretty good response um, from people showing up there. Looking forward to seeing some new faces, um, and I'm going to be seeing a lot of faces that. You know that I know very well, and I'm looking forward to that as well. we'll uh, so uh, we'll do some video link ups through the day. Yeah, and you can, uh, and if you come into the Brisbane one, you can you can meet the uh, NRL agents, the stars, who uh, Michael from Strive, he will be there, and uh, you can get him hyped up for the RC agent episode. Dodging me again? Fuck yeah! And maybe start thinking about you thinking about your questions as well for that, because that'll be coming up over the next couple of weeks for sure. My question is, why do you um, keep dodging me? Well, save for the show. You can ask him to his to his face, essentially. How good is via video via, via video link? How about that? All right. Catch him. Catch him on the show. How about Fuck that? that guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, and also with the, with the our other wing house, no no cost or anything. Rock up. Uh, from the look of it, they got tons of TVs. It's going to be a fucking great place to watch the game. Smash some fucking wings. Have some drinks if you're that way inclined. And uh, yeah, close to public transport, close to parking. If you're a non-drinker or you want to fucking you know live live life like the seventies and fucking just just get tanked and fucking drive it home. Look, I'm not your dad. I'm not going to fucking tell you what to do. Um, now, I've got one thing, boys, that I just want to put on you for the end of the episode. If you could want to direct yourself to the uh, the chat section of Skype here, I'm going to send an image through as we uh, 
reset the counter to zero and uh, have our first postseason atrocity. And this, the winner is Penrith. As I said, press send on it. Zach Hosking oh, has dressed up, my God. Has, has, wow. has dressed up for Mad Monday. Um, and he is dressed up with someone else who I'm not sure who the other person is, but he is dressed up as the Williams sisters. No. Wearing, wearing tennis tennis whites and uh, white Tennis hair blacks. And uh, full full black face, arms, chest, oh. legs. Nah. And when I say tennis whites, it's basically a uh, sleeveless tank and a short, short skirt. So there's a lot of fucking brown paint going on to get that outfit. Yeah, fucking hell, boys. So, uh, yeah. Jesus That's gonna... fucking So, so now, now when we press stop on this, I'm going to direct myself to the timeline where <laughs> the most perpetually <laughs> bleeding vagina fan base is going to have to fucking play a straight bat to that one. <laughs> So, uh, congratulations, Penrith. You win the uh, postseason atrocity counter. I haven't heard boo out of anyone else. Um, so, uh, a couple of men you know the, boys are over you know in Vegas, a couple thing in about Bali. This? What's that? The reason you haven't heard boo out of anyone else is because of the shit that happened with the Bulldogs a couple of years back when the fucking scrubbo journos flew the drone up mm. to get the, to get to, the to get To get a nice shot of um, Adam Elliott's massive cock. That's it. Shit is so fucking nailed down now. Yeah. Because they're like, well, everyone is out here. The worst thing is A, that they've done this, mm. but B, they've fucking own Golden. Yep. Yep. They're, they're, they're that fucking not on the page. Yeah. That it's okay to post. So look for the look for the headlines as you're watching as you're listening to this show tomorrow, tomorrow our time on, on Saturday. Uh, look for the headlines where the, where the Panthers are defending um, you know, the mystery brown substance in, a, in an Instagram photo from Zach Hosking. Yeah. <laughs> ah, good times. And on that note... Fucking Australia. See everybody at the various meetups. And... Uh, Pumped. Let's go. And if you can't come, lift. That's it. And uh, we'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.